Here we are at the mill picking up the wood, getting ready to split the shakes. Only the nicest wood can be used for these shakes. Notice that when I finish splitting that shake, I'm going to flip the block. When I flip the block, the shakes coming off next are going to taper. These ones are starting from a three-quarter inch butt thickness, and they're going to taper down to about a eighth of an inch at the tip. I'm always gauging to make sure that the thickness is going to be correct at the tip, so we don't have too much wood wasted. However, all the wood splits differently all the time, so you're always playing with the wood, trying to make sure it's working efficiently for you. If you don't flip the block, the shakes end up being straight split, or in other words, they have the same thickness all the way down the length of the shake. Taper split shakes can only be made from the straightest, tightest grain. These 30 inch taper split shakes call for extra special wood. This is an amazing resource. You'll notice that I'm spinning the block, so I'm splitting a shake off of both faces before I flip the block to uh, make it taper on the next go around. This saves a bit of time, but you can only do it with the nicest quality wood. Yes, it's true. The wood for these shakes is coming from a tree that's well over 600 years old. It's quite an experience to be able to work with this wood and make a special product from it. The tools that I'm using here are called a mallet and fro. They've been around in different forms for hundreds of years. It's a great way to split the wood by hand. Wood is the star of the show here. Look how uniform the butt thickness comes out and how uniformly tapered they are down the length of the shake to the tip. 